Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Road to Better Health and Reduce Stress in Challenging Times. And a really big thank you to La Trobe City for having me on for these Let's Talk Business chats. Very excited to be here, and thank you to Alison for arranging it. Always love being able to share the message and give some simple tips to help change people's lives as well. So I'll start moving through the presentation, which should change um, on your screens as well as you move through. And uh, hopefully you've also been able to receive the workbook that, that can go along with this presentation. And what that means is that you'll get a little bit of extra information and you can take some notes as we move along about maybe what you're willing to implement or what you're willing to try over the next few weeks to see what works for you. And today we'll be looking at my three-part system to get you regaining your energy, ditching the stress and feeling your best all without wasting any of your time and your money. And the way I do that is looking at eating to thrive, hydration and de-stressing the mind and the body. By the end of this workshop, you'll have the tools to influence your focus, improve creativity, increase productivity, regain your energy and feel less stressed. And I think that's what we all want in life and particularly in 2020. Um, so a little bit about me. I am Stacey. <laughs> I am a mum of two. And I started No Nutrition in 2018. And the reason I did that is because I suffered from glandular fever, burnout, adrenal fatigue, all while working full time in my corporate job. Uh, I have always been interested in nutrition though, and I was qualified as a biochemist in 2010, and that's the study of the human body with a focus on metabolic pathways. And when my dad passed away in 2018 from a lifestyle related cancer, I knew my calling was to leave my high level corporate job in food safety and pursue helping others with wellness. And the reason I just wanted to talk a little bit about that is because most people watching this probably are either running their own business or working for someone else. And I have, I have done both of those things in, I guess, the 10 years that I've been out working. I have had um, the joys of working quite high up in an ASX listed company and as well as very much understand the stress that comes with working in small business and running your own business as well. And fast forwarding to now, I've refreshed my training in nutrition, sports nutrition and health coaching. And the reason I've done that is because so much has changed in the 10 years since I finished my degree and I wanted to make sure I had the most recent information I became a smart genomic wellness practitioner, which means I can look at people's um, DNA and genetics to help work out what they might be genetically predisposed to. And Know Your Nutrition is now my full or part-time gig, which I do around um, the two little kids that you can see in the photo there. So a little bit about eating to thrive. Uh, it's about enjoying healthy, balanced meals, finding your food balance and listening to your body. And to get to that, it's finding what works for you and it's knowing that no one diet fits every person. And I wanted to give a little bit of education around that as well. And it's having a balance of carbohydrates, fats, protein, and then another macro, which we don't always consider, which is alcohol. And alcohol is uh, something that our body prioritizes metabolizing over our food. So if we're often having a lot of drinks at the same time, we're having a heavy meal, it may mean that that heavy meal will sit in our stomach and not digest until we have dealt with the alcohol first. Um, so I do just like to let people know that if you choose to drink, it can be a really good idea to separate that from your food as well. And I will start with protein and it, it really is the most important place to start. So what happens when you start eating the right amount of protein is that you'll have less cravings. You're more like, sorry, you're less likely then to snack or snack on the less, I guess, ideal foods. Uh, you'll feel fuller for longer, better exercise performance and recovery, 
hormone balancing, approved immunity, and what we want for work, improved focus. We're not having that same brain fog or losing energy at the end of the day or wanting that, that three o'clock snack that we all want at our desks. And how to get more protein into your diet is meats like chicken, turkey, pork. Uh, red meat can be really great as well. Uh, but depending on you, you might want to limit that uh, to just a couple of times a week to give your digestive system a break. Fish and other seafood, dairy products, nuts, seeds, beans like kidneys and chickpeas, tofu and protein powder can be an option for those of us who are, are very busy or if you have a high demanding job, uh, physically demanding job, or you um, spend a lot of time at the gym or exercise as well, sometimes we do need that extra supplement to get us through. And fats, which I like to call brain food. And we tend to um, be told that fat is bad for us, uh, but it's actually not the case. There is definitely some great benefits with fats and they're really, really important to us having a healthy, balanced life. Uh, around 20 to 35% of our total energy requirements should be from fats. And what happens when we start eating the right amounts of those is that, again, we, we're able to regulate our hunger, less likely to snack or less likely to want the, the less than ideal foods, provides our body with energy and stored energy. When our body has a little bit of stored energy, which I know not everybody likes thinking of it that way, it actually can often mean that our body feels nice and safe and comfortable and it's able to operate at a much safer level and optimal level. It's critical for normal nerve function. It stores some vitamins, maintains healthy cholesterol levels, uh, helps with glowing hair, healthy skin and strong nails improves our brain function and our brain development, which is so important, particularly when we're wanting to get the most out of our work day and really be as efficient as we can while we're at work. So we can get out of the office or out of our home office as soon as possible to spend time doing other things with the people that we love. Uh, it can assist in reducing inflammation and reduces risks of cardiovascular disease and it can decrease the risk of depression and, and anxiety, which I think is incredibly important, particularly in 2020 with all of the extra stress that is going on for people and when not everyone has that same support around them that they're, they're used to as well. So where to find some good fats can be oils, oily fish, full fat dairy, coconut yogurt and avocados are some really great sources of some delicious healthy fats. And carbohydrates, just do a double check to make sure no one's joining. <laughs> uh, carbohydrates have three fundamental roles in the human body. And that's in providing our body immediate fuel supply. Uh, so that's what we really use uh, to get us through our work day while we're sitting at our desk or if we're gonna go shopping or for our walk or chase the kids around, whatever it may be. And it also provides us with stored energy, which helps us for exercise performance, uh, comes back to helping our body feel safe again. And it really assists with, assists with our digestive health. And digestive health is really where things start with all of our health. So getting our gut health right is really, really important. And by having some good healthy carbs in our diet, it feeds our gut bacteria. Uh, that helps us regulate our bowel motions, optimize our cholesterol levels. So important for avoiding that 3 p.m. crash, reduces the risk of bowel disease. And you can, we need fiber in our diet. It helps with so many things when it comes to gut health. And these foods are usually carbohydrates. And this brings me to be a little bit more specific on fiber as well. Fiber is an incredibly important part of a balanced diet. Women require 25 grams per day and men 30 grams per day. And what happens when we start eating the right amount is that we have more sustained energy throughout the day. We're able to think more clearly. We'll have less cravings. 
will feel fuller for longer. So we're less likely to snack or want those high energy sugary foods. Uh, regularity with bowel movements, it flushes the waste and improves our digestive health and uh, reduces our risk of cancers such as bowel and cardiovascular, as well as managing our blood sugar levels. And all of these things can not only help us lose weight if that's a goal of ours, but it gives us better health. And on top of that, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that 70% of our immune system is found in our gut and fiber is the most important thing we can do to help our gut health. And when we get that right, we should also be able to perform better at work. We'll be less likely to miss days of work. And particularly if you've got employees or, or even people within your teams, it, when we want people performing at the optimum level, nutrition can be such a good part of getting the most out of everybody in their day. And if you're looking to get more fiber in your diet, beans and lentils can be really great for this eating the skins on fruits and veggies where appropriate to do so. Uh, high fiber options of some specific foods, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, avocado, broccoli, choosing whole grain pastas and breads rather than the white alternatives. And uh, if you really feel like you're struggling to get on top of your fiber, adding some psyllium husks to your smoothies can be really great as well, but starting very small with that. And the next part I just wanted to touch on was intuitive eating. And this comes back to trusting your gut. And intuitive eating is a style of eating that encourages us to really listen to our body for how hungry we are, how full we are, and also to recognize if, if we're satisfied. And it really can be a bit scary because we're always taught with so many diets and things out there that you have to eat a certain way or you have to eat a certain thing. You need to have this many calories and it just doesn't always work because we're all different. But if we come back to trusting our gut and really listening to ourselves and being more mindful, we can really get to know ourselves and how much food we actually need and what we respond well to, what makes us feel good emotionally and physically and what our digestive system responds well to as well. Uh, so this is one that um, in, if you go to your workbook, you can start having a little bit of a, a write down and think about your favorite times to eat. Do you love eating breakfast? Do you look forward to it? Or maybe it's dinner or maybe it is that 3 p.m. snack. Maybe that's the highlight of your, your day. But it's really getting to know what works for you. Uh, say you hate eating breakfast. Well, yeah, they, they might say that breakfast is the most important part of the day. But if you're forcing your body to do it, then maybe for you it's not. And it's knowing that that's okay because you're listening to what your body needs. So the next time that you're, you're sitting down for a meal, whether it be snack, um, if you're having lunch right now, can be a, a perfect time to do it or dinner tonight, is before um, you sat down to actually start the meal is to say, how hungry am I? And think about it of a scale of one to 10, where one is that you're ravenous, you're going to go to the pantry and you're going to eat absolutely everything. You're going to tear it apart. You can't even remember the last time you ate, you were starving through to 10, which I call post-Christmas lunch. You never want to see food again. You never want to eat again. You just want to call up in a bowl and go to sleep. <laughs> and you start to get a little bit of a feel for where you're at. Generally, if we're going to eat, you probably want to be somewhere in the middle, maybe a, a four to a seven. And there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just getting um, you to have a bit of a scale. If you want to do one to five or whatever number it is for you, that's completely fine. And it's going, okay, you know, I'm pretty hungry. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to eat this meal. I, I think I'm probably about a four. And then halfway through the meal, you might pop down your fork and just have a little bit of a think about how hungry am I still? Maybe you didn't actually need very much food and you, you've stopped and thought about it and you're actually feeling quite satisfied. You might stop now and you can always pop the food in the fridge, change your mind later. It's not going to go anywhere. Or you might go, no, I'm still starving. So you keep eating. <laughs> and 
this is where you really start to get a feel for your body. And it's just bringing mindfulness back into what you're doing, particularly at the moment when we're all working from home. I'm sure that we all have fallen into, into the habit of eating our lunch in front of the computer. <laughs> And when we do that, we're not being mindful. So we don't always realize that we're full. And that's really what intuitive eating comes back to. And what is important to recognize is that many of us also have a gene that means that we have a delayed reaction to realizing that we are full. And what happens there is that um, if you're one of those people, you'll often be eating along, feeling, yeah, I can still eat, I can still eat, I'm still hungry. And then 20 minutes later, you hit post-Christmas lunch and you go, oh, why did I eat so much? I thought I was hungry, but clearly I didn't. And this is where the reflection comes in is that, yeah, right now you're still feeling full and this has happened a few days in a row. You'll start to know you're one of those people. So you, you get the idea and the feel for your body that, hey, I'm I think I've eaten enough. I've eaten what I usually eat each day. I'm going to wait 15 minutes, see how I feel. If I'm still hungry, I'll come back and I'll, I'll grab something else. And that's the reflection piece. It's also really great for recognizing how the, the meal has made you feel. Are you feeling really great after it? Ready to go for a run after work? Or are you ready to just move from the desk chair to the couch and watch Netflix for the rest of the night? And you can start to get that reflection and work out what your body is responding well to and really bringing mindfulness. And when you look back with this mindfulness as well, at the end of the day, uh, you can start to go, did I skip a meal? And that's why I've wanted the cheesecake, all of the cheesecake tonight or Maybe I didn't drink enough water, which is why I'm really lacking energy today. And you start to just check in with yourself, it takes a couple of minutes each day, and you'll really get to know what your body is responding well to. And some tips just to nourish yourself, particularly at the moment while we are spending so much time at home, trying not to skip meals. Uh, thinking, oh, I'm just going to keep working a little bit longer, I'm just going to keep working a little bit longer. Taking that break to nourish yourself will give you more energy right now. It'll stop you wanting the high energy snack later and it'll help reduce that, that crash. And I know it's really hard. We, we sit there and we're like, oh, I can't possibly stop now. I've got too much work to do. But if you stop and you actually take some time out to have a break, have your healthy meal, you'll be more productive and you'll probably get it done more quickly anyway. Having healthy snacks prepared and on the go. So that might be that you've got your, your yogurt already in a container with some berries. So all you have to do is pop to the fridge and grab that rather than having to prepare everything and cut things up. Maybe it's having a fruit bowl at your desk or some, some really other healthy snacks that you could have. Um, maybe you've got, if you like salty, it might be some nuts or some popcorn or something like that, that you can just have there if, if you do feel hungry throughout your work day. Uh, these things will really help you feel fuller for longer as well and stop that crash. Uh, as I mentioned before, avoid eating at your desk if you can because that's where we lose that mindfulness and we really forget um, that we're eating and we're just doing it and going through the process rather than enjoying our food. And when we don't be mindful about our food, our brain doesn't actually know um, what we're doing. So it doesn't have time to tell our stomach that it needs to start preparing different digestive enzymes and getting prepared for the food that's coming into our stomach we're less likely to digest well, we're more likely to bloat and have issues later on. So being as mindful as we can about our meals is really important. And if you're feeling stuck, not knowing where to start, uh, if every meal, every main meal, you're just trying to find something that has a protein source, a fat source and filling in the rest with carbs, such as fruit and veggies, you'll be in a really great place. And in the workbook, uh, that there's some really great examples of those foods as well. And you can go and jot down your favorite foods out of those and you'll be able to fill the plate nice and easily. Water, I like to call water the silent game changer. 
most people don't drink enough water and you'll be able to see on the side of the screen there um, how much water that you need for your weight and it, it's very interesting usually most people will come in a lot higher than what they drink uh, so you're able to do that calculation now and jot it down in your notes as well uh, but just um, stopping and having a, a think to yourself if you suffer from headaches, increased body temperature, low blood pressure, nausea, dizziness, feeling thirsty all the time, lethargic, or perhaps you have brain fog or trouble concentrating, these things can all just come back to us not drinking enough water. And what happens when we start to get the right amount other than just going to the toilet 45 times a day is more energy, improved sleep, better exercise performance, improved skin. It flushes our waist. Um, it's easier to maintain a healthy weight. We're able to stay focused for longer at work. And those things are pretty incredible to just come from water, I think. Uh, so if you take the time uh, to work out how much um, you need and just uh, have a little bit of a comparison to how much you think you're drinking at the moment, uh, it can be a really big difference and such a game changer just getting your water right. And if you're going to take one thing out of this whole thing, it would be the water for sure. Some tips to get some extra water. If you use Google Chrome, they've got a, a water reminder app extension. Otherwise, you can get plenty of apps on your phone that will give you a little water drop or something when you're due to have another drink. And if you really hate the taste of water, flavoring it with some iced tea bags or cucumber, lemon, lime can really be a great way of getting some extra water into you. And the calculation there is just, I guess it's a, it's a one size fits all. If you exercise a lot or your job is quite active um, and on days like today where it's quite warm, you might actually need more water. And the best way to do that is to go away and Google a, a pea colour chart and just check out um, where you sit on the scale. And uh, I know a lot of businesses also will put these just even up on the back of their toilet doors so that their employees can check it out every time they go to the bathroom. And as we sort of move a little bit away now from the nutrition side of things, and it's knowing that how much stress can affect us from achieving our goals, even if we're getting the food and exercise right. And the reason I like to include this is because if we are extremely stressed in our lives, we can be doing everything right with what we're consuming and still things won't change. We still might have headaches. We still might be gaining weight or retaining weights or feeling like we've got brain fog. So I wanted to share a few tips as well on how to reduce stress and really help move your body from flight or fight mode. And what I mean by flight or fight mode is really that's when our nervous system is in the mode where we're prepared to run away. And the reason we have this is coming back from our caveman days where we literally might have had to run away from some sort of danger. Uh, perhaps it was a lion that was going to chase us or we had to fight someone to protect our land or our food. And the thing is now is in our modern day, we have this reaction to all sorts of things. It can be a text message or someone in a different department to us said something about us and then someone else told us or someone sent us a, an email and they're a little bit rude. Or, and then it invokes this reaction in us now. And if we're under chronic stress, our body gets stuck in this mode because we're never, ever coming back down. So say you've been to the gym this morning and then you've raced straight to work. Well, probably haven't raced straight to work, but maybe you've raced straight to your office desk. You've got the kids out to school and you haven't really stopped for a second. You're already at a heightened state of stress because exercise, albeit a good stress, is still a stress on our body. And if we haven't taken the time to sit down and maybe have a nice breakfast or 
take a deep breath or do a meditation, we already have elevated cortisol or our stress hormone perhaps to here. And we're already sitting here and then someone emails and says, I haven't got this report. It's due now, oh, it's due two hours ago. I would need it now. And then all of a sudden we'd go to here instead of had we had that moment to relax, we would have been here after the gym and now we've just gone to here. But instead we're up here. Something else happens. Uh, the, one of the kids is sick at school. And now I've got to go and try and pick them up at the same time as doing the report. And now I'm up here. So you can see that it, it builds and builds and builds. And particularly at times right now where we do have this underlying stress of not knowing exactly what our days are going to look like or what we're going to be able to do next week or and there's a lot going on in the world it's really important to to start trying to do the best we can to reduce our stress levels and if our body is always trying to run away from danger or being prepared to run away from danger what happens is that all of our blood flows to our limbs. We start leaning forward. We get bad posture. So our head starts coming over our shoulders round. We become more alert. So our eyes will even <laughs> get wider. The heart will start to race. And your body doesn't worry about digesting food because it's like, well, I don't really care about what's sitting in my belly right now. I've got to be as prepared as I can to get you away from the danger. And what that means is that the food will sit there, it won't digest as well. And this can lead to all sorts of issues with, with bloating, stomach pains. And it's exactly why if you've gone through an, a stressful event, you'll feel like your stomach has dropped. And it's because we have such a nervous response in that, that part of our body to when something bad happens or even if we perceive something as bad. And the next part of it is that if it's preparing us to run away from danger, we're also not really thinking very clearly. We're not going to make the best decisions for our, our workplace at that time either. And it's because we're not sitting there relaxed where our brain can be creative or think through things logically. It's just thinking, how can I get out of here? How can I deal with this as soon as possible? And on top of that, if weight is something that you've struggled with, then our bodies, if they're feeling stressed, won't lose weight because it wants to hold on to all of that weight. So you've got energy for the next time you need to run away from danger. <laughs> so you can be doing all of the right things with exercise, food and nutrition, but if you're not getting on top of the stress, then you, you can just get a little bit stuck. Um, so some things to assist. Meditation. And there's one that um, you can all do right now while you're sitting here listening to this. And it's, it's just a desktop getting present exercise. And what it might be is something that you do at the start of your workday, particularly when we're mostly working from home. Or you get an email that makes you want to just throw the computer or whatever it may be that's, that's frustrated you throughout the day is just to stop for 10 seconds and get present. And what you would do is ground both of your feet. So both of your feet are flat on the ground, putting your hands just on top of your knees and just taking a really deep breath in the nose and out the mouth. And what you'll do is you'll recognize that you're just here, you're at your desk and everything's okay. And what you've just done is that you've told your brain that you're not actually in any sort of physical danger. You can do this for as long as you need. Sometimes you just need the one breath. Other times you might need a little bit longer and maybe it's recognizing, uh, okay, some things around me just to get yourself present. It might be the picture on the wall or the dog or cat sitting beside you at the moment. And it just brings you back to getting present in this very moment and usually taking that 10, 20 seconds you'll feel far less frustrated at whatever it is that's just happened. And you'll be able to think a lot more clearly about how to deal with whatever that situation is. And a benefit of doing it at the start of your workday as well, without anything actually have stressing you out, is that you get present in your workday. And it's sitting there to say, yep, I'm at work now. 
this is what I've got to do. This is where my focus is. It's not doing the washing, cleaning this, doing the kitchen dishes and all the other distractions that we have while we're working at home. And then you can do the same thing at lunchtime. You move away from the desk to eat your lunch. So you might be sitting at the kitchen table. Okay, now I'm here to have lunch. Work will still be there in 15 minutes when I'm done. <laughs> And then at the end of the workday, I think is when it's most important just to sit there and get present and say, okay, I've had a really productive day. I've written my list for tomorrow. I can close the door. Hopefully you've got an office where you can close the door at home. I think it makes a difference. But if not, just, just put a, some finality to your workday, whether that be switching your phone off, closing your diary, putting your pen away, whatever it may be for you and saying, yes, I'm done with that, so that you're able to move through and actually enjoy whatever comes after work for you because those lines are so blurred right now. We just sort of roll out of bed to a desk and then from our desk to the couch and our, our brains really aren't getting that division anymore that they were very used to. And this, the next part is quality sleep. And this is, again, so important to everything about helping us feel energized, improving our immune systems, and even the way that we deal with sleep, uh, with stress, sorry. And to get the most quality sleep, uh, we can't always control the quantity, uh, is to try and go to bed at the same time each night and wake up at the same time each morning, uh, even on weekends, try and keep it within an hour of your normal wake time. This really helps your circadian rhythm. And when we play with the times we get up and go to bed too much, um, it can actually cause us long-term health damage. And it's actually quite crazy that the number of heart attacks that happen at daylight savings increases by like a crazy number because that, that circadian rhythm for so many people has just been switched. And... Um, probably a few people on here guilty of watching Netflix or being on their phone right up until bed, trying to keep those things outside that hour before you go to sleep. So switching to using that time to perhaps read a book, having a chat with someone you live with, um, meditation, journaling, filling that time with something else, even if it's just preparing your clothes and lunches for the next day rather than staring at a screen. The lights on most screens uh, aren't really good for us and they make us think that it's daytime and it, again, it affects our, our normal rhythm. So keeping away from those will definitely help us have a more restful sleep and help you fall asleep uh, a little bit easier. Um, meditation before bed can be really great to help you fall asleep or reading before bed as well can be a really great way to help that quality. Trying to avoid eating in the last hour before you go to bed, also incredibly important. You don't want to be giving yourself an energy hit right before you want to be going to sleep. And as well as that, sleep is when our body repairs itself. So ensuring that the body can do that rather than worrying about digesting food is really important. Uh, the next one is gratitudes. Um, just finding things each day to be grateful for. And that can be simply asking yourself what went well today. And these can be really small things. It might be you got two loads of washing done and that went really well. Or maybe you got to do something at work that you got recognized for. Maybe the kids did something really great, but it's just bringing back, it can be anything and uh, what we try to do in our house, we don't do it all the time, but we do aim to write on a post-it note um, at dinner time what went well or what we're grateful for today. And sometimes they can be really serious things. Maybe something had happened. For example, my son, when he was two, jumped out of his cot and he broke his arm. But we were really grateful that we had access to really good health care and support. So that day it was that. And I'm going to dob my husband in who's actually listening right now. Um, he had a really good eggs Benedict one day and he wrote hollandaise sauce as his thing. So it can really be anything. It, it can be something that's so trivial through to things that are really serious depending on what happened that day. 
And what you can do is at the end of the week, month or year, you pull them out and read them and you go, oh, things actually went pretty well this week. And I think for 2020, finding those small wins in each day can be so important. Breathing techniques, uh, which I touched on a little bit with the meditation, uh, but just a deep breath in the nose and out the mouth six times can change your whole state. Uh, so definitely give that a go. If you don't really into a breathing technique, another one you can do if you're feeling like you have a, having a bad day is go smile at yourself in the mirror for 10 seconds. Definitely changes things around. You feel a little bit silly, but definitely helps things. <laughs> um, spending time in nature. So if you can get outside, even if it's just walking on your grass to, to get the mail or uh, spending some time with your pets or kids while you're not at your desk working, then that's huge. If you are back in the office trying to get out um, before or after work, just so for some fresh air is really, really great. Um, having those clear definitions between when work starts and ends, as I mentioned before, taking breaks in your work day. Uh, there's some really good methods out there that you can do, which might be that, okay, I'm going to turn off any phones, emails, messengers, all the things that um, we have these days for the next half an hour. And I'm going to focus on this task and this task only. You set a timer, half an hour, you go and do that. And then maybe for the next half an hour, you can go and have a little break, have a drink, and you might come back and arrange or go through any emails, missed calls, and then arrange what you're going to do in the next half an hour period. Uh, moving your body, simple as getting up and just walking around the, the house every half an hour or so just to keep the body moving really helps give us a break and it does make us more productive even though we feel like we don't have the time to do it. And setting really clear boundaries, particularly at the moment. And that goes for your family to make sure that they understand that right now you need to be doing work and perhaps not getting a snack or all the washing for that next half an hour. But also the other way too is just making sure that those that you work with understand that at the time that you're, you're done for today, that's when you're done and you'll be back and able to help them with whatever is needed at whatever time the next day. Yeah. And that's really it for most of the, the key information that I wanted to share with everyone today. And before we move to any questions, I thought I would just share a little bit about how I can help you out if um, you are interested in learning any more or doing anything um, specific with your nutrition or your health. And um, there is a deal there for 20% off. Um, if you text the number there and say, I'm ready Latrobe. <laughs> and there's just a few different programs there that I offer as well. So I offer anything from one-off meal planning sessions to longer term coaching sessions as well where everything is completely personalized to you and your goals, your challenges and what's going on in your world and finding what is really your best health and the best um, techniques to get you living your best life. And I think that is it. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Okay, if anyone has any questions, you are all on mute. So just feel free to unmute yourself to, and ask away. No, if not, then we'll, we'll wrap that one up. But thanks so much, Stacey. That was really informative. I found that really beneficial. So I hope everyone else that's watching um, did as well. As um, you're aware, this session will be recorded, has been recorded, sorry, and will be available on our website in the coming days. And we'll also email out the workbook, which um, Stacey mentioned in her presentation a couple of times. If you are watching this online um, on our website, then please make contact with our business development team and we can email through that workbook to you as well. So thanks, everyone, and I hope you have a great afternoon. <laughs>